Hey, so I was just um, looking into HLSL shaders in Unreal, and um, I'm not really experienced with HLSL. Um, but, you know, I think I could figure it out. And uh, I was a little surprised that it's not really, like, super well supported. Um, I have this other video on... Uh, uh, custom functions in Houdini, uh, material functions, but that's in Vex. But this one's going to be HLSL. It's actually pretty similar, though, although I actually think the Houdini OI is better, to be honest. But <laughs> um, then again, with HL HLSL, you can actually, uh, you know, download the stuff from Shader Toy. Um, and, you know, HLSL is much more widely uh, supported than Vex, obviously. So... You don't have to like rewrite stuff in a different language. As similar as they are, you know, they're all sort of C based. Um, anyway, so kind of the gist of it is you use this custom node, right? And I was kind of messing with this a little while. Um, I have this on a post process material here. So, kind of the general idea with this is um, you take, you know, you take your, you, first you make the material domain post process. You, know, you go here, you make your post process volume. Added to the materials list, you know, um, your material, and then uh, take the scene texture, set this to uh, post process input zero. This is um, this actual output is the color of a specific pixel, and then this UVs are automatically set. But then you can still use this. Uh, um, sorry, you can still use the texture coordinates. Um, to get the UVs if you need to pass these somewhere else, or you know, just pass them in here. Um, anyway, and so yeah, you want to do some messing with post process. Uh, you want to do some post process kind of camera shaders. Um, and yeah, I wanted to use some shader toy stuff for this. Um, actually, what I was trying to do is there's some OBS filters. What is the the thing called? Let me see. Um, Uh, it's called like OBS shader filter on GitHub. I only made a video about this. And this has a bunch of um, like camera effect shaders. So I was going to try and recreate some of these in Unreal. Um, and then I kind of encountered some difficulty because these shaders are like, like normal, you know, normal HLSL shaders. You know, they have all this uniform stuff. They have functions, they have the main image function. This just doesn't work, and uh, you can't just use this directly in Unreal. So, basically, to cut to the chase, this custom node here, you can copy paste in here. And the, yeah, there are like uh, this includes thing, but apparently it doesn't auto reload uh, if you add a header in here. And it's just all, it's just all sort of janky. So, I just kind of found the way that I think works the best, which is. Um, so this code right here has to be a you cannot you can't have functions in it. So basically, every one of these function contents here has to be uh, a single custom node. So just take for example here this one right here. This is just a really simple lerp from color A to color B, and then mix is like the lerp amount. And I'm just passing a sine wave uh, remapped to uh, O to one into the mix here. Um, you have these input parameters, color A, uh, color B. You don't have to type make the types of these. The type is automatically detected, which is kind of cool. Um, and then if I pass this into here, uh, and now you can see in my game, it's just like, you know, use the sine wave between red and green, right? That's exactly what I said to do. Um, but like for this kind of more real world example, you know, I, I want to call some other function, right? So how do I do that if I can't write functions inside the node? Well, I was looking at this video, this, first of all, I was digging around with this for ages, and then I finally found this one, and at the, I think at the 12 minute mark, they talk about how to do it. It's a little, like, esoteric, and it's actually not documented in the, it's not in the, the docs for the custom node, so that's why I'm just making this video on it. So basically what you do is you plug this, you make another input on your second 
um, custom node, this is the node that's going to call this function. And even though this function doesn't have a name, if you make an input, call whatever you want. Actually, the name does not matter here. Like this will just be called like random function or whatever, right? It doesn't matter. And um, but inside here, see, I have this custom expression zero. Um, and apparently these names are auto-generated, like this would be custom function 0, this would be custom function 1. And so you have to call with parameters here, and then as you see I'm passing in color A, color B, and mix, which are this custom node's own uh, parameters here. So it's using this function, but it's passing its own inputs to it. And the result in this case, I mean this is a kind of contrived example, but as you can see I'm using the same function but just with different inputs. And so you can kind of, hopefully you can see the power of this. I think this is sort of how you're supposed to do this sort of like shader development with HLSL. Um, I'd say this is just kind of a quick little tip. Um, let me know if there's anything. Yeah, for sure.